Hello and welcome back to Lunch Break. Uh, we are having these conversations every day for the month of April. Today is our last day, except that tomorrow is Friday, which is the day that we will be doing them during the month of May. <laughs> so <laughs> we are here today with an amazing group of expert healers. Um, we're hosting conversations on topics that interest our community from managing stress in small businesses, solutions and parenting and healing solutions, all the different things that happen within our community. Today, we are talking about holding space and healing the world. You know, a tiny, small feat. <laughs> uh, so today, we have an amazing group of women, and I am going to let them introduce themselves. Allie, can we start with you? Hey. My name is Ali Yanni. I am one of the madrinas here at Las Comadres, and I'm a healer. I'm a cranial sacral therapist. I'm a medical intuitive. I channel, I write, and I do all the things, and I love all the people. Awesome. Mariana? Um, I am a madrina slash tia uh, here at Las Comadres, and um, I think you could probably call me a catalyst a catalyst for self-discovery and, and healing, and I use different modalities um, to support people in um, finding, you know, their path and finding love and joy and healing whatever it is that they that they that they need to, to be healing. So that's kind of, in a nutshell. Awesome, Marlene. My name is Marlene Menendez, and I am, I would say, an energy worker to. Uh, encompass it. Um, I've been calling myself a modern mystic la lately, so um, I'm trying that on for size. But what that means is that I coordinate energy for the purposes of healing, basically in a nutshell. Um, and I try to provide a reflection for people to see themselves. Perfect. And Krista? Um, yeah, so... so in the same realm um in the in the healing uh modality i i practice that as as just holding space for the, the healing of others and um and myself <laughs> um so i use uh movement and breath and and yoga and energy work and shamanic work and um just kind of all the tools that uh that I've been offered that, that I give back to, to whoever needs it during that time. Uh, so yeah, just, just all encompassing, uh, energy healer movement. Perfect. Worker. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely perfect. So we always start these, uh, lunch breaks with what are you grateful for? Who would like to start? What are you grateful for today? I'm sorry. Today, I am grateful for my new home. That I am the crazy person who moved during quarantine, but it was what was being asked of me, and I followed that guidance. So I am officially fully moved in, even though the house is a hot mess. And I am so grateful for what's coming. Well, I'm always grateful for coffee. And I think every time I come on here, I'm just like coffee, like coffee, coffee. Um, and after and after coffee, uh, I've been really grateful right now for my body, um, like my, my body and 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 my health and 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 being able to move it the way that, that I've been practicing moving it and and watching the development of that. I've been practicing handstands for almost a month now and I almost have it. And so it's just been, I've been very grateful for that and for that, for the discipline of, of, of that daily practice of my daily, daily practice. It has kept me very, very centered and grounded throughout all of this. I'm very grateful for, actually I'm with Mariana on this one. I'm super grateful for my body. And throughout this space and time that we've been in quarantine, it really has been communicating with me. And because of the space, I've been able to listen more clearly. So I'm really, really grateful for the information that my body is giving me as to 
what I need personally, mm. which is kind of cool. Great <laughs> mm. Yeah, um, I'm grateful for the, the time and the space. Um, and, and everything that's just kind of been presented in its uh, surface form for me to, you know, to observe and, um, you know, to maybe remix <laughs> and uh, to acknowledge. Uh, so I've been grateful for the time and the space to maybe, you know, to maybe write a little more, to study a little more, to read a little more, to, to just be out of time. So the, the time to be out of time has been <laughs> really uh, special that I can wake up and do whatever I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. mm -hmm. no choice. <laughs> you know so i yeah i mean i've been really grateful for my my home and the space that it's been holding for me during this process mm -hmm. very nice today i am grateful for community it was my birthday a couple of days ago and it was super cool to see all of my friends and on zoom calls and millions of messages and tons of people reaching out and so it was Super cool to know how many people love. So, so today we are talking about holding space and healing the world, which I mean is no small topic here, but I, we've got the people that are doing the work. So um, I wanted to first like get a, just sort of a definition of what does holding space mean for you? I know that like, this is something in the yoga, woo, meditation world that we talk about a lot, but for people that don't know this terminology, um, what does holding space mean for you? Um, so the, the first word that came up to me is presence, right? Like holding space in so many ways is, is the simple action of being present to somebody else, but like fully present. To somebody else so if i'm if we're having a conversation you're not thinking about what you're going to have for lunch right you're just fully present and open and and listening it's like an active listening of another human or a group of other humans that that might be that that might be in that in that space um so for me it's present and then the other thing that comes up for me is that it's 100 percent feminine energy holding space is of the feminine um, and that doesn't mean that men can't hold space, but they get to, act, you know, they can. And it's, and, it's, and it's in the accessing of that feminine energy in order to just like actively listening, but I don't need to act, do anything. I'm just actively present and listening to, to whomever is with me or a group of people. Beautiful. Yeah, I agree with you, Mariana, and the words that come to mind are specifically be with. Mm -hmm. Holding space for the world is the act of being with whoever is in front of you. And being with in the space of neutrality. Mm. So without judgment. So to be with family or to be with clients is to be aware of whatever they're experiencing and allowing the expression of the experience without judging it or taking it personal. So it's, it's being in the space of neutrality as this is what is and loving what is. Yeah. yeah, ladies, I have to say the first word that came to me was be, just be. It's, it's about not doing anything, but doing something. It's really weird. It's like this space in between where you just, it's in the name, you just hold. You mm -hmm. just hold that being um, regardless of what's happening externally. Because when you hold space, something funny happens. Things start popping off around you, you know? And it's almost like being the center of a storm and just watching it go around you without stepping into it. Just kind of staying in the eye of that storm. You know, and just being there, observing. I guess observing is another good mm -hmm. um, word. <clears throat> I um, I also see it uh, as being a guardian of. So, um, 
being a guardian of that space. So um, this, you know, with a lot of initiations and rites that sometimes come, it's, you know, there's earth keepers and there's wisdom keepers and there's star keepers. And it's like, um, like space is always being held um, around us in, and, and also through us through these guardians and we just kind of kind of become one of these beautiful guardians of, of where we're at, you know, individually and, and globally, <laughs> you know, like, like you came here to, to hold such a, a beautiful space within yourself and, and, and your community. So I, I feel, yeah, all of the words that you said, but also to, you know, to be a guardian of Very nice. Yes. I think that those are all like great examples. So like, um, I think that it's good to know, like what is happening in the world, right? That is the space is being held for right now. Um, everybody is having a, everybody is in some form of the storm, right? Like not everybody's having the same experience, but everybody is in some form of the storm. And, um, what is your experience right now for the sort of collective world? So I'll, I'll jump in. Um, like you said, there are lots of little bits and pieces, so they're all going to be a little different, but essentially collectively we're having a rebirth. And in that rebirth is going down into the underworld, looking at our shadows, stripping off all kinds of layers of things that we thought were important that clearly are not important. And we're seeing it in quarantine, like the ideas of certain material aspects or values, like they're starting to strip away. And it's not without the process of sorting and discomfort in the process, because it's, it's like being in the cocoon, like we're getting a little tight and our stuff's coming up and we want to break out. But until we look at the shadows and the questions and the things that we've been putting off, we're not going to break all the way out. Um, piggybacking off of what Ali was saying about shadow, um, I'm going to name three, which is fear, grief, and anger. Um, I believe the, like, um, those are the, the biggest emotions um, or energies that I, that, that, uh, I, I believe are <laughs> flowing through the collective right now um a lot of fear around what's going to happen what's not going to happen uh, am i going to get sick am i not going to get sick you know all like fear fear of the of, of the future uh, and this big uncertainty of we don't know you know we don't know what we don't know um and then the grief of what was right like this grief a grief of we're not going to go back like there's no going back you know we're, we, we get to create new things etc cetera, etc cetera, but there's there's this the grief of the past as well as any anybody that we might have lost through this through this quarantine or we know of somebody who lost somebody etc cetera, etc cetera. and then the anger of, of, of anger slash frustration of i don't i can't do anything about this right like i'm stuck in my house like i i can't you know in general i can't like do anything to solve this right i just get to wait like sit here and wait and <laughs> you know, hope for the best, you know, and, and that angers and frustrates a lot of people. Um, so just adding to Ali, those would be the three, the three energies that I feel the collective are most present in the collective right now. And I'm also seeing for myself, um, exactly what the girls are talking about as well. And then there's this stream of like, courage that's running through everybody and whether it be because of the situation um manifesting itself in a loss of job or a loss of routine or a loss of an actual person um, or a loss of your peace because now you are forced to be in the here and now all the time um, like mariana was saying we don't know what that future is going to look like. We have so much uncertainty and the unknown. So all we have left is now. And the collective is really becoming aware of just having a now. So that has sparked up in my experience and with some of the women that I've been talking to, because I primarily work with women, um, 
they have this little thing of, well, if I'm going to do it, the time is now. Well, if I'm going to take the step, then the time is now. If I'm going to be powerful, then I have to do it now. So there's a sense of urgency that comes along with all of this that people are finding other stuff is not as important as I thought it was. You know, this that I have burning inside of me that I've been hearing the call for months, years, whatever. Um, maybe now is the time to do it. So I do see some courage coming from a lot of people right now. Yeah, yeah all the all the emotions, it's all, it, they're all coming up in <laughs> different <laughs> shapes and forms and and um, it's so interesting just to observe like the fluctuations of where you're at each and every day, you know, um, and how they are really tying in together, uh, you know, in, um, in what you're putting out there, what you're choosing not to. Um, I just think, you know, as, as a collective and, and what my, my breath coach always says, and it just cracks me up because every time I come to him and I'm like, blah, 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 I have this problem, blah, 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 and I'm just shooting off all my stuff. He's like, well, have you sat? And did you just sit and breathe? And he's like, here's my answer. Go sit and breathe. Go sit and breathe. Go sit and breathe. <laughs> he's like, so it's such a, you know, so my thing is like, are we allowing ourselves to just sit and breathe? Or it doesn't have to um, look like like something because uh, sometimes when, like that's what I've just learned is by really tapping into the breath, like all of this stuff can shed, you know, we can shed the fear and the anger and we, it, it can be much more simpler than we, we, we uh, make it out to be, you know, that we have to do something to, to counteract. So maybe if, when we just sit and breathe, it, it'll happen for us. If we allow ourselves that, that gift, <laughs> you know, I think that's the hard thing because that's, that is also having to be in the here and now and to let things, you know, flow, rush, ignite, activate, um, you know, however it's going to show up through you um, instead of getting so stuck in it. Um, yeah. So as people are, you know, one experiencing their own shifting and moving, you're also experiencing the shifting and moving that is going on with the people that you are quarantining with, right? And your collective people, right? Like who, are, who you're having conversations with daily or weekly, the people that you are, you know, sharing your social media with, the things that are coming in and around you. How do you hold space for that? Properly is not the right word, but how do you hold space for all the people around you? Well, first of all, um, I hold space for myself first. A really, really important part of holding space, I believe, is self-care and taking care of this vessel that we have, this funky skin suit that we have going on, you know, because holding space remember uh well not remember but w there's um ancient teachings about so above so below right so within so without so in my view how can i hold space for others if i can't hold space for myself so holding space first starts with a real personal journey for me to take care of my body and to really really try to eat as well as I can, try to do my self-care routines um, in preparation for healings or for my day or for something I'm going to write. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's almost like get in the routine of holding space for yourself. And then the idea of holding space for a larger group of people or for one person or for a collective starts becoming something that you're able to do and you naturally fall into as a healer, right? I like that. Um, um, so what the word that came up for me was compassion. 
and, and also what Ali was saying, the neutrality of it, um, because it's not for me to, like, I can hold it, but it's not for me to take, right? Like, it's not, it's not mine to now take and want to fix or change or, or do anything, uh, anything with, um, in, in that sense. Uh, and I agree with Marlene wholeheartedly, like, it starts with yourself. If, if, if you... Um, are still practicing holding space for yourself or it's something that you're exploring for the first time it's it, it starts with us like any type of healing starts with us um in in that sense before you can go and offer it to anybody else or or share it in that in 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 that sense um and once you've kind of mastered your own uh holding of space and you've been able to love yourself through all of your S H I T, then you can, right? I'm like, I don't know. Um, then you can, then you have that ability to hold space for someone else from that place of neutrality that Ali was saying and not taking things personally or not having any judgment or, um, and, and also having that ability to say, that's not mine to carry, right? Like I'm holding space for, so it can come up and out for you. Um, and we can transmute it, but it's not my responsibility to carry. And I think that is like that key piece of holding space. So you don't, you don't end up drained and exhausted. Right. Um, and as healers, I think that's a, like the other side of that practice of what's mine and what's not mine energetically. Absolutely. I want to add to that because before I think of holding space for anybody, it's, me and my own stuff right we all have, have our own stuff like even yeah. in my own storyline there's the i am neutrality is super easy for me for clients with clients and strangers and friends neutrality in my own stuff and like my storyline of like i'm responsible for how the kids feel i'm responsible for everyone's happiness i'm responsible that it all gets done like the mother bear responsibility stuff really comes up for me. And again, the first word I heard was compassion and self-love. Like I get to be compassionate with wherever I'm at for the day and then root down really, really strong. So whether that's like in the house or in the yard, like root down like a tree so that the wind and all the stuff can flow and I'm not going to fall down. And, and part of that self-love is to allow the feelings. Like, watch the clouds move. You are not the clouds. Like, watch the anger, watch the tears, watch the frustration, be present to it and let it come up and like, let it go out. And so when you become clear in that, like there, and allowing essentially, then holding space for anybody is really, really easy. Yeah. And, um... I'm just always going back to the the observation of it, you know, to just be the observer. Um, it's just kind of what I've been feeling into. So you, you know, you mentioned with social media and your family and this, the relationships and everything. It's uh, you know, to just to, to be the observer and um, I guess to try our best not to take every think so personally <laughs> or just to, you know to really um, to observe what it is that still triggers us or um, what we are triggering in others so I, I'm seeing both I, I see what and who triggers me and I see where I trigger um, others as well so there's holding space and in, in that space between um, those you know those those two dualities and uh so you know as on a more of a of a, of a bigger i guess like we're saying the world or global level i'm trying to really listen to um what messages come through and what i'm going to put back out there so you know maybe a message is coming through for an individual or maybe it's coming through for me or maybe it's coming through for a collective and um you know, so trying to hold space in that way, as well as, um, you know, what, where is this information that I'm observing coming from? And, and, and can it be put to good, good use or, um, or 
is it just my personal stuff that doesn't need to be put <laughs> good use? I mean, you know, is it something that stays within or is it something that gets shared um, as well? Very nice. So, oh, go ahead. Oh, I, I want to add, sorry, I want to add one thing, Jamie, to that because it just kept coming up and it's, it was, a, it's boundaries. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and in regards to holding space for that, and I kind of what Krista was was saying, right, as part of holding space for yourself, at least in that sense, and, and having that awareness of if you are triggered by the news, you know what I mean? If, if, if the news is something that is very much affecting you, hold space for yourself and say not today or not right now, or instead of watching the news, I'm going to read the news. And that is a way of holding space for yourself um, from a place of, of, of self-love and compassion, right? Um, and, and honoring where you're at. And, and the same with family members, right? We have family or friends, you know, I, we have family members and friends who are like, this is doomsday, Armageddon. And then we have other family members who are, this is, you know, I'm so grateful. Everything is amazing. I have my health. I have my family. I have my health. Right. And so there's there's the, those two extremes and saying, OK, am I in a space today to be with the Armageddon family? Sure. OK, yeah, I'll get on that Zoom call today. I'm not. So I'm going to honor that. I'm going to hold space for myself and I'm going to politely decline the Zoom call and I'll see them tomorrow. Right. So so becoming aware, the observer of your boundaries and what's like what's affecting your well-being and being able to say no to that. Or yes, to some, or, or yes to that is also a, a wonderful way of learning how to hold space for yourself and then others, right? Absolutely. Right. Yeah, and I want to add to that even at time. Like there's, there are certain hours of the morning that I will not answer clients back. And I'm still holding like work hours because I get to have my own time and my own experience. And like the mornings are when I sit with spirit. It's when I read, it's when I write. And so that's my time. Mm -hmm. And so anybody holding space for the world, that's like, when is your sacred time? For some people, it might be right before bed. It might be lunchtime because that's when you feel the best, whatever it is. Like, when do you get grounded? When do you fill your cup? When do you have your heart honored? You know? Yeah. Um, all right, so people in Facebook land, you are more than welcome to ask our amazing healers any questions you have. So please feel free to put them in the chat and we will answer them. Um, you guys all sort of touched on this, but I would like, you know, some concrete things on what you could do when you actually do absorb other people's energy, right? Like those days when you have anger and you're pretty sure it's not yours. It just came from somewhere over here. And you have sadness that may not be yours or grief that is not yours or any of the things that you don't really want to hold on to. How do you get that out of your body? I dance and I put on some music with drums and I stomp my feet and I shake my arms and do whatever I need to do. And then I'll lay in the grass, like whether it's face down, like third eyed to the earth or flat out, like making a point that to request that she take it, whatever it is, she take it. Mm -hmm. I like salt. Yeah, I was going to say. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> we all have the salt and fire thing that we do really well. Yes. I, I love me some salt, you know, because it's such a new, it's like a neutralizer. Mm -hmm. So immediately I get in a salt bath or I just literally get a mason jar and like, throw it over me or <laughs> I come up with really creative ways to use salt. I guess we could do another zoom call on that. <laughs> but salt is a good one. Salt is a good one to use in many, many forms. And, and also, um, like Ali said, using your words, words or vibration. If, if you've picked up an energy that you don't know where it's coming from, you know it's not yours and you've tried several things that you go to and it doesn't work i like to give it away mm -hmm. just say hey like whatever i took on here or whatever's going on here is too much for me so i offer it 
up to the great spirit source, your higher self, whatever it is that you believe in. And I kind of offer it to a greater spirit um, in humility of not being able to get rid of it myself or process it myself at this time. And I find that that usually immediately lifts some sort of weight some sort of responsibility that now it's yours to take care of. We always have support from the universe and from our spirit guides and from our angels and, and from your source or whatever it is that you believe in, but use that, use that support system. Um, adding to the to the salt to the salt baths and the and and the, and the movements, um, especially when it comes to anger and and frustration, sound um, is very very powerful. I am a fan of catharsis. For those of you who don't know yet, um, and actually putting a pillow to your mouth and yelling into a pillow. Um, will create a vibration, a very powerful vibration in your liver, which is where we hold all that anger. And so it starts to, to pull that, like push that anger out, right? Whether it's yours, whether it's yours or, or, or anybody else's. So for me, it's sound like big ahs, ah, like, you know what I mean? Even humming, um, shh, moving things out. And then the last one is I've also, I've also visualized like light coming down and like washing it all away, like washing it all away. Um, oh, it stopped. Okay. The phone never rings in this house. And now of course it started <laughs> ringing. Um, uh, in, in that sense. So those are, those are my, those are my favorites of there's something stuck on me. Um, it's not mine, or even if it is mine, I just want it to go away now. <laughs> it's time. Like I don't, I don't want to analyze. I don't want to go into what am I feeling? Why am I feeling? What's it tied to? I just want it out. Um, I would probably go into into one of those three. Um, Gabby has commented that uh, that Mariana made her scream into a pillow, and it really worked. So. <laughs> <laughs> It does. It does. I was um super short story the other day. I was at my sister's and she has a seven year old and the seven year old was very upset. She was and I she's I kept I was like, are you angry? And she's like, no, I'm just frustrated. She hasn't had a play date. This poor little girl has not been like with another human her age in a very long time. And so it was all very nor like, you know, like completely understandable that she was in the state that she was. And uh, I was trying to get her to like yell into her pillow or at least like punch the pillow just to release some of that energy because her energy was like hitting me in the head and I was like, stop it, child. <laughs> and I finally got her to break a pencil. Like I finally got her, I was like, okay, like try to like break the pencil and she broke, and when she broke the pencil, she started laughing, right? Like she just felt that like little release and she had these, these like two little pencils and I was like, okay. Now we can like go back because like I, she wouldn't leave the room and, and all of this stuff. But literally she just like, she finally broke the pencil. It wasn't that easy for her to break, but like she just put all of that frustration into the pencil and then I, like it popped open, it made the sound and she started laughing and I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> My head, literally, like I just like, it was like oh, this energy, she's seven, she's tiny. And I was like, you're, you're killing me, Smalls. Like we gotta get this out. <laughs> So break pencils, if anything. <laughs> break pencils. Krista, what else do you have for us? Any good uh, energy releasing? I mean, personally, for me during this time, it's, it's been movement, um, prayer, and ceremony. You know? Like, I, yeah, if it comes to this, it boils up to this point, then I got to move it out. Mm -hmm. um, if it's in a point of stillness and, like, um, and tears and emotion, then I, I cry it out and I pray it out. <laughs> uh, you know, I surrender and and um, and then just you know, ceremony of, of blessing or releasing or uh, whatever the ceremony uh, needs to be, and and that's a good one because that's not only for yourself, but that that can be for the collective too. You know, that you you, you are bringing ceremony and to. to uh, the whole space for <laughs> for everyone with your you know your fire and your offering and, uh, and burning things too burning things is really mm -hmm. awesome 
Yeah. As well, I mean, we, I know we talked about fire, but we didn't talk about like what you can do with the fire. Um, and, I, and I felt that you, you know, um, you wanted a couple of like, you know, tangible takeaways. You yeah. Can burn. Yeah, you can, you can like build a little, I mean, if you don't have a fireplace or something like that, you can kind of get a pot, like a safe pot um uh in the, in um in that and like have make a little fire and burn this and burn it, write whatever it is that you know you're going through and burn it um if there's something that you that you picked up and all of a sudden you felt all this emotion around a picture or a, you know or, or some sort of memory and you want to burn that like burning the you know it, it it's it's also very cathartic and also a way to release energy what you know kind of what crystal was was saying when she speaks about ceremony um, and, and, and about ceremonies and rituals, again, you don't have to be a shaman to do these things. It really is about the, like your intention and, and, and that presence and trusting it, right? And so you can make a ceremony and a ritual with anything. Like you can light a candle, put some music on, you know what I mean? Like very much get present and then allow what's meant to happen to happen kind of like get out of the way and just trust it in that sense and it doesn't need to look any w way shape or form um you know like uh we're all healers like we all have the capacity to to heal and we all have the capacity to hold space and 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 all of that it, it really is about practicing just you know opening yourself up and practicing it and and letting it be what it is um and creating the sacred space, you know, like yeah. Alex said, it's creating the sacred space and letting it go from there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And like you said, like, it's all intention. And as like a weird, um, really simple example is like yesterday I was cleaning the old house and I was wiping the windows down and I was very intentional and saying like, I release this experience of this house. I release this experience. I release this lesson. I don't need to relearn this lesson. Like you make ceremony simply from intention with anything. Ceremony could be folding laundry, like folding the laundry. Like I love my family. I love this home. Thank you for its blessings. Mm -hmm. 100%. And the other thing I want to add, and Marlene can speak a lot more to this, but I, I think a, a, like just a general understanding is, you know, our mind and our emotions are going to oscillate constantly, right? Like, if I think something, I will feel something. If I feel something, I will think something, right? And there's this like, connection, there's this ping pong going, you know what I mean? Left, right, left, right. And the only way to break that apart is, A, let's pause, right? Like, have that moment of, of pause. And then you, you have two choices, basically. Either go into prayer and meditation, right? Like, find that connection to spirit, to source, to higher self, et cetera, et cetera. Or get into your body. Move around like a crazy person. Go for a walk. Run, et cetera, et cetera. The only way you are going to stop that mind, like like the, the monkey mind and the emotions in the monkey mind is is by either going into spirit in a way or going into, into your body through dance, through yoga, through running, through planting. Like, you know what I mean? I'm gonna go plant all these flowers in my backyard, whatever, whatever that is, that will produce the 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 pause and that and and, and that kind of like moment of presence of I, I am here now what Marlene was talking about like before too right like be here or Ram Dass, be here now <laughs> all right anything else to add ladies on you know creating your own ceremony or creating your own sacred space I think that like a lot of times people get really overwhelmed with the idea right yeah. that it's got to be like the shaman has to make it the you have to like go somewhere to do it and you know do we have any other krista do you have any other things to add in the in the creating of circle and the creating of just sacred space in general what in nature <laughs> nature has every altar every every tool you need pick up a rock pick up a stick pick some shells find a feather find a flower you know that's you know, that, can, that can be a new ceremony right there. You can just put together these, these things that are already supporting you um, and just honor them and give them what you need. Take a stone, blow, blow your anger. Just 
grow your email, grow your frustration with um, with negative thoughts. Throw it into the snow, get it back. Um, you know, take the flower, put it in the water, ooh, you cleanse yourself, use nature, you uh thing with the soft or um Building your little mandalas, your creations. Uh, you don't have to go really anywhere. <laughs> you just take, when you take your walk, if something calls to you, pick it up. If it's calling to you for a reason, ask for permission, take it. You know, let that be a part of your um, your space. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so create your, your ceremony with what's what's already here. You don't have to go to Amazon. <laughs> you don't have to order anything. <laughs> it's, it's, it's right outside. Uh, and then just, you know, when you ask for that guidance, uh, see see what, what comes right into your path. Um, and just, you know, allow yourself not to just hold space but to be held right so so that's what every time I go outside I'm just like I see the sun I'm like ha oh, thank thank you you know thanks for holding me today yeah. or I put my feet in the in the earth and it's like thanks for for holding me or each win I'm like oh I feel so good <laughs> you know you know so so allowing yourself to not always you know be that of holding space but but let that that space hold you too. Um, yeah, it's the yeah. medicine of receiving, right? Yeah. And if, there's, and if there's one thing that's holding space all the time for us is nature. Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing you can rely on. It's dependable. It's stable. That tree is still going to be there tomorrow. That sky is going to still be tomorrow. The sun is going to come up the next day. And it's so reliable, so dependable so supportive so mirror that right yeah and I think another that's thing i wanted to ask add about it it's not about when sometimes when people say holding space they think about maybe coddling mm -hmm. right um i don't know i i'm from a hispanic background and it's like you can't shed a tear without five tias or grandmothers coming at you and be like what's wrong what's wrong you want to eat or whatever <laughs> you know and it's like holding space can be uncomfortable it could definitely be uncomfortable and it's about finding that flexibility between being um, a support system but not enabling a behavior or rescuing or saving we don't have to do anything but be there. So um, I, I learned this um, a few years back um, in ceremony, actually. And I'm so glad you guys described ceremony because people are a little afraid when you say ceremony, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and someone started crying, a short story. Someone started crying and I instinctively got up to give them a hug. And my teacher was like, no sit send energy send love but don't coddle allow her to have the experience why are you taking this away from her the moment you interrupt you're taking a beautiful gift away from that person whether it be in an aha moment or a realization or just a big huge release but yes remember about that holding space doesn't mean you have to save anyone or rescue anyone it's just um just being a tree <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah it's that's so beautiful because i mean that's essentially what we do yeah. when we're being with people we allow them the experience because otherwise we'd be stealing their experience absolutely right and and the idea of ceremony i really want to add is um call in whatever it is you believe i i have a client and at um one point she's like she had an aha that she didn't realize that she could ask god for anything like she wasn't taught that growing up it was 
her paradigm was a little different. And I said, make requests and then ask them to be obvious. What's the worst that's going to happen, right? And it was a huge aha that you had permission to make a request. And so for some people, it might be calling in the directions. Some people, it'll be calling in their guides. It might be calling in Archangel Michael. It might be calling in your elders. And for some people, elders is their immediate family. And for me, I'm thinking like the elders of all the people that we have always been one spirit family, you know, all the medicine makers, all the healers, all the channelers, like they're my family. And so we never are doing anything alone. And that's part of ceremony. Whatever it is you believe, make the request for their presence and then do your thing. Mm -hmm. Only a little small thing. Yeah. <laughs> Just a small tiny thing. Take a huge leap of faith. <laughs> Just ask for tiny. help. Just go back to all the ancestors of all the worlds of all the things. There might be a little chatter with that. They might you might get a little bit of information. <laughs> but everybody's gonna do it different, and I think that's the whole thing. Like I, I want people like my my goal is that people find their own divinity in every moment so that people get like you can do the things because you already have it all inside of you like everyone has their own medicine always yeah very nice all right so um if there are any questions from Facebook, please post them in there. We have about 10 minutes left and I would love to get to anything you guys want to know. But for now, what do you guys think the world needs now for the healing? Song, you start singing. <laughs> I was gonna break out into song right now. <laughs> there you go. We are the world. <laughs> You know, it's, it's no small thing. Yeah. Compassion and gentleness is definitely up there on the list. And we do it for ourselves, but we do it for other people. You know, if you see something in someone else, you've got it. Right? If you're reacting to someone's behavior, you've got it too. So gentleness and compassion. And a level of surrender of how things get done. Like release the how, like we are all taken care of. We have no idea how it's going to happen. Release the how. Practice trust. Um, so for me, it's a, a big slowing down and a simplifying. And, uh, and I think we're all being asked to slow down uh, and, start, and listen, going back to what Krista was saying as well, and, and listen and and reconnect, reconnect to earth, reconnect to ourselves, our hearts. Um, and, and, a, and a simplification of the matter, like a simplification of life. Life is, is much more simple than what we make it be, right? Um, in, in that sense. And if, we, and if we really look at it, it's also a remembering, right? Because we've done it before. We have, we have, we've been through simpler times, the evolution of humanity. And now I'm kind of going like really big, right? There was a point where we lived in caves and we, we hunted and we gathered and everybody was fine. You know what I mean? Like in, in, in that sense. And we've evolved this with so much with technology and the industrial revolution, et cetera, et cetera, that we, I, I feel that we've lost that connection, right? And that, and that remembering of, of our basic needs. And, and that's all we really need. You know, everything else is a cherry on top. And so I, I believe there's a stripping of that happening right now. Um, what Ali was also talking about, right? Like this death and, and this rebirth into a slowing down and a simplification of life and priorities like and priorities and values people realizing how how much family is a priority or right now they they what they have in front of them is dealing with their relationship of whatever shape or something that they've been putting off forever and i'm not about and i'm not talking about like creating a business right like all of a sudden it's just like oh hello husband child mother father 
we haven't addressed this pink elephant in the room and now that's all we got so are you gonna who, who's gonna what okay right um and so a lot around relationship with ourselves with 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 others and creativity like okay i gotta how what what else is possible to 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 be or, or to do um in that in that sense so i as i as i i watch and see how all of these structures that we have created right the economic one the education one the health one right which humans created it we made it up ladies and gentlemen um i i see the possibility of creating you know in a way a new world um, and new systems that honor more of the collective and not so not, is not as selective yep yep definitely to piggyback on both of that i mean it really comes down to choosing love mm. you know and every choice you make choose love if if you've gone down a self-destructive pattern and the pattern shows up again, choose love. Choose love for yourself. Choose love for your family. Choose love for your neighbors. Choose love for your community. And as a collective, um, with the powers that be, I would say, let's call them that, if they would choose love instead of something else, then maybe we can get back in line with what the people want. Maybe we can get back in line with common compassion, like Ali was saying, um, creativity, like Mariana was saying, building systems that actually support the people, the 99% versus the 1%. So I think what we need as a collective is to choose love. And love is not giving all your stuff away. Healthy love is being loved and loving. Allowing yourself to be loved. So if there's ever a situation in front of you where you're loving the other person more than you're loving yourself, then there's something out of balance there. And it's not from a selfish place and it's not from an egotistical place, but if you need to put the gas mask on first so that you can help others and that's choosing love. And it might look kind of funky for other people when you don't give everything away because you love something, right? You actually show tough love and know when to set your boundaries. So yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, another amen to that. <laughs> you got the amen, I'll take the amen. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree with all of that. And, and also, you know, the, the love, uh, the, the self-love and, and for me, it's, um, to just, although you already know, allow yourself to still be the student. So I'm, I'm really just loving being the student because this is new. This is new. This is, it's a new way of life. It's something new that's being birthed. So uh, in the eyes of a child, if I can stay in that vibration, then it's not the worry of the world. It's the eyes of the child that says, wow, this is, this is great. Like, I mean, I listen, I have, my son's a teenager, but I have two little kids that are next door and and I have a trampoline, so I hear them, they, they, they climb over the fence and they, they use the trampoline. And I hear them every day and they're just laughing and they're jumping and they're climbing and they, you know, yeah, they, they got to do school. They're still doing their thing, but, but they're, they're really enjoying this time. They're enjoying being with their family. They're enjoying being outside. They're enjoying not having so much structure they're enjoying you know um you know they're they're probably just enjoying that we're out of the busyness as much and, and they can feel that they're being held um so so yeah i would just say like just be the student in this like what is coming up what am i supposed to learn what oh this is really this new 
life is, you know, what's it going to show me? Um, so I'm trying to just kind of stay in that as if it, other than I know anything, <laughs> you know, so that um, I can stay really open into the, the play of it. Perfect. And that's big one for me to, to play. So <laughs> maybe maybe the world too. <laughs> maybe you can play into it. I know I I'm that was so yeah. <laughs> I think we all need to play a little bit more. And so yeah. I like this. I like it for the world. Let's bring in more compassion, <sighs> more love, more play to all the things that is making the world a much better place. Thank you, ladies. You guys are amazing. Um, our community is opening up again on May 4th. Las Comadres will be having open enrollment. And we, if you are called to be part of this, we would love to have you. Um, thank you, Ali and Mariana and Krista and Marlene. It's been incredible to hear your worldview as well as you know some very good hits on how to heal and how to take part in you know the collective healing of the world so thank you we will see you tomorrow for the next lunch break